Groucho Marx. Can you bet your life? Groucho sent me to see the new DeSoto. Groucho sent me and I love to drive this car. It's long and low and roomier, so handsome you can see. It's powerful and I'm so glad that Groucho sent me. Listen to him when you hear Groucho say. So drive the new DeSoto at DeSoto Plymouth Dealers today. And now, here he is, the one, the only... That old fogey. Oh, that's me, Groucho Marx. <laughs> well, here I am again with $2,000 for one of our couples, and if any of them say the secret word, the duck will fly down and pay him $100. The word tonight is step back. Well, I'm a dirty bird. <laughs> <laughs> and you look like George Goble. <laughs> Grand, Doc. Mr. Fenneman, on with it, huh? No, oh, Groucho, Mrs. Floretta McCutcheon, Mr. Frank Farber are waiting to talk to you, so folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome to the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Floretta McCutcheon and Frank Farber, eh? Mrs. McCutcheon, may I call you Floretta, Mrs. McCutcheon? It's a pretty name, and I like to get friendly early. Well, most of my friends call me Mac. Fred! Oh, okay, Mac. Fred, honey, the new Holy Weekly Mac. World News is here. Oh, boy! I'm to ask you Oh, I'm so excited. Me, too. I love it when it comes every Monday. <laughs> Isn't it good? Ooh! Ooh, human head kept alive for six days. Now, that's my kind of story, this Betty. This is a good one, Fred, honey. Mm, look at that poor girl crying her eyes out. Oh, too bad. What here? Paper, airplane burns down. House? Oh, what a mistake. <laughs> Poor people. That'll teach you not to play with those paper airplanes, honey. Well, I won't anymore. Let's see. There must be something. Oh, here's that poor bogus bride. There she is. Oh, I wonder what happened to her. Huh. I suspect a nefarious circumstance, Fred. I guess so. There's two brides here. Two Something's brides. fishy about that. I'm so that glad one. that didn't happen when we got married. No, no. I had no eyes for anybody else, honey. You know that. Oh, there it is. Sister Crystal. Sister Crystal, the psychic astrologer, yeah. is she the one you're going to write to? Mm -mm, I already wrote to her, honey. Well, look, I think she'll be great. Although Sister Diane is pretty good, too. I don't know. But I'll, if you think Sister Crystal will give you better advice, we might as well write to her. Or maybe Mrs. Miller. That could be good, too. Oh, you know, okay. Healing hands. I'd like to ma write to him. He cures your sick head. <laughs> <laughs> Once in a while, we have a little sick head. I <laughs> we know. Did. Ooh, Ooh, gross Ooh. rat. Oh, oh Fred, no. this is a great issue. The huh? poor queen. Whenever they have the queen, that's when it's my favorite issue. I know, honey. <laughs> I think you're royalty deep down, somewhere back in your... In your you other really? lives, you must have been a I queen. I admire her so much. Well, I do too. She has to eat roast rat for a special state banquet. She'd do anything, you know. She'll do anything she has to because she's the queen. That's right. I got to give her a lot of credit. Let's see. What else I we got Bobby. here? here. Mm -hmm. Oh, Anthony Quinn. Yeah, eternal youth. Well, he's found a different huge blimp-like space creatures found on Earth. Fred, oh, honey. honey. This must be a feature story Why here. don't you read that for me, You okay? want me to? Yeah. I'd be happy to, Fred. All right. Huge blimp-like space creatures found on Earth. A herd of space animals the size and shape of the Goodyear blimp grazed for three hours on cattle pastures near the remote Argentine ranching settlement of Villa Iruya. Argentina, oh, down there no, in you South America, known, you, you know, there's known. crazy things going <laughs> on. It. The alien animals appearing semi-transparent and resembling, quote, gigantic bags of gas, unquote. Oh. According to several witnesses, I'm glad they had witnesses, Fred. I'm glad it wasn't down the street from us. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Soared into the sky and slowly vanished from sight when they had finished their browsing. Wow. The bizarre sighting was reported in a news dispatch from Buenos Aires, just like you said, mm -hmm. and quoted scientific speculation that the creatures are drifting across the cosmos, moving from planet to planet like a herd of gargantuan cows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, you. <yeah. laughs> I'm glad they're not grazing on our lawn, Me Fred. Me too. 
Their lifespan must be incredible to cross such vast distances of space at what amounts to a snail's pace, one puzzled scientist said. To all intents and purposes, these blimp cows must be immortal. Immortal. Skeptics at first laughed off the reported sightings as merely a natural aberration. They always do. You can count on those skeptics every time. Created by fog or low-lying clouds illuminated by the moon. Hmm. But that off-the-cuff theory was quickly discounted when it was learned that the space animals had not made their Earth visit at night. So showed them, huh? Yeah, right. And they had been seen under clear blue skies in the bright light of day. I believe these things. When people can see them in daytime, well, we know they're, they're I know. not telling a lie. That's the truth. Oh, those skeptics. The creatures were colossal like nothing I have seen before, declared 55-year-old ranch foreman Luis Pedroza. Uh -huh. They made no sound, but their bodies seemed to quiver and roll slowly from side to side as they rested on the grass. If uh -huh. I alone had seen them, I would have told no one. They would have thought me mad. But here it is, Fred. I was not alone. Several of my workers were there with me, and they saw what I saw, cow-like animals that looked like gigantic bags of gas resting on the cooling grass of the pampas. Oh, darn, that's oh, something. It must have been a sweet sight. I'd you know? love to have seen that. Me too. Gosh. Pedroza said the animals, and even dozen in all, had no apparent features to indicate they were living creatures. But he said he and his workers could sense that they were looking at a strange life form from another world. Boy. I have not the words or wisdom to explain what we felt, Pedroza said, but it was as though we could feel the surging of life in those transparent bodies. Yeah. It was like when I feel the presence of God when I am in church. Oh boy, this is a religious man. I this, know. This guy wouldn't be making this story. No, he uh -uh. wouldn't lie. Uh -uh. He goes to church. Pedroza and the other witnesses said the space animals gave no indication of being hostile and none made a menacing move toward them. They were friendly aliens. Good. <laughs> the kind Good. we like. Yeah. The workers said that they watched the grazing space herd for about three hours. Then shortly after two o'clock, one of them began to drift upward and the rest followed. Oh gosh, they rose into the sky until they vanished from sight. Oh, what a beautiful sight that must have been. Yeah. Golly. We all knew we were witness to a sight no man on earth has seen before, Pedroza said. We just sat there on our horses watching them and praying. Oh, man, that makes you feel good. It you know? really does. And if it right, wasn't honey. for the Weekly World News, we never would have heard about it. That's right, unless they landed on our lawn, which I'm glad they didn't. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Ten reindeer slaughtered and skinned for a movie? Oh, please. Oh, no. those vicious Hollywood types. I know it. I really don't want to read about that, Fred. Oh. I, those poor little reindeer, Donder and Blitz. Don't worry, and then, honey. Oh, I won't take you to that movie. No, no I don't want to uh, see that movie, Fred. I won't Fred. even talk about no, it. No, don't even talk about it, please. Mmm. Couples spat, causes million dollar, million dollars in damages? <laughs> How can you have an argument that big? I guess you gotta have a lot of money to begin with, Fred. Oh. Look, she took her husband's very expensive stereo and video equipment and threw it in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> if you did that with my VCR, but you never would do that. No, 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 I wouldn't do that at all. Oh, I hope not. Uh-uh. Here's the one I want. Human head kept alive for six days. Oh, oh boy. Fred, read it to me, sweetie. I can't bear to read this myself. All right, let me put on my glasses, honey. Okay. This, is, this is a good one. Mm -hmm. Two specialists in microsurgery have issued a startling report claiming they kept a human head alive for six days and communicated with it during their experiment. The surgeons, Dr. Walter Crack and Henry Keurig of Leipzig, East Germany, uh -huh. East, East Germany, Germany, those people known. know what they're doing, mm -hmm. scandalized their colleagues and risked serious disciplinary action when they described their work in a paper delivered before a medical society meeting. Ooh. Their experiment triggered a heated debate over ethics governing medical research. Oh, I Don't can see wonder. that. Similar experiments have been successfully performed with animals, but researchers have stopped short of experimenting on humans. I'd almost yeah. rather they did on a human than a little bunny rabbit, Fred. Well, they're going to start now. Mm -hmm. We've had the expertise for years, Seth a shocked Western scientist, but we felt it would be abhorrent to subject a human to such an experiment. Mm. Uh, Do you bet. think it's true, sweetie? I believe Do it. You? Of course, it's in the news. Oh. The East German doctors, however, insisted their experiment was valid and beyond reproach. Mm. Our patient, an auto accident victim whose oh. identity we have not released, well, Poor it, yeah, thing. was legally dead. He was after legally his dead. Head was severed from his body. Oh, his head was severed. The surgeons from... were quoted as saying, "Well, I mean, if it's off your body, I guess." Is that what makes you legally dead, sweetie? I guess sweetie? that makes you legally dead. When your head dead. is separate from your body? Yeah, oh. I think so. Okay. We were able to prolong the functioning of his brain and to observe the working of parts of the nervous system for more than 146 hours. How many days is that? that 
Must be oh, six days. Six days. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. What is more, we could communicate with our patient by instructing them to answer our questions with eye blinks. <laughs> he you agreed mean to the research. <laughs> yep. He felt it gave meaning to his last days on earth. Honey, we could do that, right? We could communicate by eye blinks, Red. Okay. One for yes <laughs> and two for no. Ask me a question, sweetie. Do you love me? Oh, <laughs> all right. Well, that one was an easy one. In their surprising report, Crack and Keurig described the elaborate procedures they used to keep the disembodied head alive and functioning. The young traffic victim, 23, oh. healthy guy, oh. had suffered extensive injuries to internal organs and his neck had been almost completely severed in a high-speed collision. Ooh, ooh. They drive so fast in Germany. Mm, I know. His body, with the head still attached by muscle and skin tissue, was rushed to a hospital where the two microsurgeons practiced. Since reattaching the head was impossible, the doctors declared the man legally dead. So I see. That's it. In Germany, that's it. Legally dead. If he dead. had had his head reattached, he wouldn't have been legally that's dead, That's right. Fred. Not legally no. dead. Right. Then decided to see if they could keep his head functioning with life support machinery. Oh. We supplied oxygenated blood to the principal veins and arteries and closed off sources of bleeding, the surgeon said in their shocking report. Within minutes, the eyes opened and the man attempted to speak. The absence of lungs and larynx made it necessary for us to communicate with the head using a code of eye blinks. Oh, Fred. Amazing. This is really something. The researchers said their patient was able to think coherently and to make decisions. His brain functioning appeared absolutely normal over the first 76 hours of artificial life support. That's like two or three days. Mm -hmm. Thereafter, it gradually deteriorated. We brought a priest to speak with the young man. He was able to receive absolution, the doctor well, said. Well, thank goodness for that. Six days after the experiment began, it ended with the brain death of the patient. Oh, and I guess if you're just ahead, when you're brain dead, you're legally dead. Yeah, I think so. Probably then, nothing more. No more eye blinks. No more eye blinks. No, it's Poor too bad. Thing. We were no longer able to get a response from the head. Brain scans showed no brain activity. The surgeon said their work has great implications for post-trauma care of people with serious head injuries and will lead to a better understanding of how to nourish and maintain brain functioning in accident victims. Uh, honey, I, I just want to say one thing. If I am ever an accident victim, now, I really hope that you'll make an attempt to remove my head because I want to stay with you as long as I can. And you could just take my head and you could put it in the den, you know, sweetie. I will. And I'll I will. blink at you until I just can't blink anymore. Oh, honey, thank you. And I'll have a lot of questions <laughs> to ask you then, too. Well, you, oh, I know you will, Brad. <laughs> Let's see what else we got. Oh, large That's... bus. There's a new bra. <laughs> well, you don't need that. <laughs> now, Fred. <laughs> All right. X-rated toy shocks, Mom. Oh, I guess so. What's Buy a that toy. It's X-rated. Look at this. It was talking dirty. A toy, a toy doll talking dirty. <laughs> Maybe we ought to get one of those, honey. Well, no, we're a Christian family, just oh, like these people well, that's here. True. I don't think we ought to worry about that uh, no. little baloney. The well, truth about those May-December marriages. Well, mm -hmm. I think they should work. Uh-huh. She's 92 and he's 27. I don't why see why it wouldn't not? work. <laughs> I think that's nice. I, I do, that's too. Real nice. It's about time, if you ask me. <gasps> ah, Bigfoot to the rescue. Oh, My favorite, This honey. is such a good issue. It's got the queen and Bigfoot. Bigfoot, too. <laughs> Will you read this one to me? You want me to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Death swoop down from the sky, but it's Bigfoot to the rescue. Oh. <laughs> I just love Bigfoot. Me too. Grave digger Ephraim Arachi was only moments away from being eaten alive by a savage flock of giant condors, but he was saved by another awesome creature of the wild, a mountain Bigfoot. Ah, that's my man. <laughs> All right. Ooh. Bellowing his rage with the fury of a rogue elephant, the hairy Goliath shielded the terrified gravedigger with his massive body and killed the crazed vultures with crushing blows from his bare fists. Oh, man, that Bigfoot, he's a powerhouse. Fred, I need to ask you a question here, sweetie. Now, what is a condor exactly? Big bird. Big a bird. You mean it's... Big. Bigger than eagle. Bigger than an eagle? Mm -hmm. So here we have big bird and big, big foot. foot. <laughs> right, right. But not the big, bir big bird like on Sesame Street. Oh, oh no. Oh, no, no it's no. a bad big bird. <laughs> oh, it's ugly. I have to yeah, say that. Yeah, it is for kind it. of ugly. Well, really? Look at this poor guy. and He's in the coffin. <laughs> it's a vulture, sweetie. Oh, I guess it that's is. it. Yeah, yeah. It, they don't want to say that in this paper. Yeah, I guess. They, they don't want to use that word, but that's really what it is. Went for the dead body. I know. Mm -hmm. In the coffin, you know what I mean? Uh, okay, Ooh. okay. Okay. Shall I go on? Yeah, yeah. All right. Mm. 
a news dispatch filed in La Paz, Bolivia, reported that Arachi was digging a grave below the snow line of Illimani, one of the highest peaks of the Bolivian Andes Mountains. This is in South America too, Fred. Some very interesting things go on in South America. Honey, I think we should take the Winnebago and go down there. All right. I think we might see Bigfoot. Wouldn't, we'd have to go through Mexico and through Latin America and everything. Yeah, that'd be all right. You, don't, you all know, right, who knows what we'd see. Be a nice trip. It would. A nice trip. If you can see Bigfoot down there, we won't have to go up to Oregon. I'd rather go to, you know, go South? South America. Okay. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. good. Um, where was I? Oh, he was attacked by more than a dozen of the enormous vultures. Oh, oh. <laughs> Carcasses found at the gravesite revealed the average size of the birds to be about six feet from tip of beak to tip of tail, with wingspans measuring between 13 and 16 feet. Okay, that's twice, Honey, as, that's twice, twice as, as tall as me. Honey, that's twice as long as you are. Yeah, yeah. That is big. That's really a big bird. Wow. <laughs> um, equally amazing, the loose dirt Arachi had excavated from the grave bore the clear impressions of immense footprints made by a creature who must have stood at least 10 feet tall and weighed close to a thousand pounds. That's Bigfoot. That's Bigfoot. That's Bigfoot. You know, they can tell how much you weigh by checking your footprints nowadays. They do that in all the murder investigations, too. You mean when I walk barefoot on the beach, they could see how much I weigh? Uh-huh. <gasps> exactly. That's how they tell now. Let's see. The La Paz news story carried this first-hand account of Arachi's encounter with death and his rescue by a creature that he described as, quote, half man, half animal, unquote. Yeah. That's my Bigfoot. That's he's Bigfoot. half man, he's half animal. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. That's our boy. That's our boy. <laughs> <laughs> I had finished digging the grave, and I was moving the coffin onto the lowering ropes when something blocked out the sunlight, the 49-year-old Ayamara Indian said. I had heard nothing, but when I looked up, I saw a great condor coming at me with its talons reaching out to claw my face. Uh, oh, 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 honey, now. Scare you, huh? Yeah. Scare me, well, too. I know Scare it. me, boy, oh, boy. Imagine a big bird in your face, and you're hiding in a coffin. <laughs> Please, those big claws coming right at your face, right through the top of the coffin. Oh, <laughs> heavenly days. I flung my arms up over my eyes. I guess he did, but I was knocked to the ground. He must have thought his time had come at that oh, point. Oh, you know, boy, you he, know he did. You know he you did, know Fred. He did, yeah. You know, I would too if I was in his place. That's why I like reading about these things. A lot of these articles are about people close to death. Mm. Sharks, all mm. sorts of things like that. Mm -hmm. Very close, but then they get saved. Then they get then saved. Then they get saved. Yeah. <laughs> Thank goodness. At once, other devil birds swooped out of the sky to attack me. I looked around for some place to hide, but there was none. <gasps> Except, guess what? Yeah, yeah. A coffin. Yeah, I guess. You know, you work in a graveyard. There are plenty of those around. I don't think we'll go to any graveyards when we're in South America. No. Maybe okay? we could find Bigfoot uh, at a park. Yeah, in a, a recreational beach. park. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bigfoot might like to swim. <laughs> <laughs> I bet he loves the beach. Hey, and barbecues. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a big barbecue, Fred. Okay. And then that'll then entice him over to the beach that's where a good we are. Idea. That's a real good idea. I don't want to go to the graveyard either. <laughs> I don't know what his favorite food is, though. Well, um, I bet hamburgers. He'd go for hamburgers. You think he'd like just hamburgers? Like us. Sure. A little enchilada sauce on him or the something? The kind you make. Yeah, I think he'd like the kind you make. <laughs> he great. would, yeah. honey. <laughs> Mm. But the coffin was made of woven twigs, and I knew the condors could easily rip it to pieces. Oh. In seconds, the beasts were tearing the twigs away with their beaks and claws. Poor and people, then, twigs for coffins. You mean the, oh. Oh, the coffin was made out of twigs? Oh, that's a shame. Okay, okay. Things but are not good, not good down, down there. there. No. Uh, mm -mm. Then I heard a thundering roar of rage that shook the ground like an earthquake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what else? Come on. Uh, then I saw the hairy beast man yeah. charge into the clearing with his <laughs> arms flailing the air. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think he acts like this in Oregon, too? Oh, everywhere, everywhere. Bigfoot. So they got a union. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, sure. Union. There's tons of them. Tons of them by now. Oh, I love reading about Bigfoot me with you. Me too. Yeah. Me too, honey. <laughs> Oh, where was I? A thundering roar. Oh, then I, oh no, I said that. Right here. The, I saw the hairy beast man charge in the clearing with his arms flailing air. The condors flew at him in a furious attack, but he had the strength of a hundred men. 
and he beat them off with ease. Ah, 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 condors! Oh, oh, God, if we could only have been there! Man, I would have loved to have taken pictures of this. I know it, my goodness. I can't. Um, the fight went on like that for only a few minutes before the remaining condors flew off. As I lay in the coffin, I looked up and saw the creature staring down at me. I was certain it was now my turn to be torn limb from limb. But it had not come to harm me. It had come to save my life. It made a grunt. Then it just walked away. I watched until it disappeared in the trees. Ah! Fred? Ah! Fred! Ah! It's Bigfoot! Oh my goodness! Ah! Oh, my oh. <laughs> oh. oh honey. Fred, I always knew you were my Bigfoot! Oh, you know it! You know it, Betty! <laughs> You're so cute, sweetie! Look at that hair! You think Bigfoot would recognize me as a brother if I wore this, huh? Oh, I absolutely do! Oh, good. Oh, Fred! You know something, sweetie? You're my Bigfoot. We don't even need to go to South America. Uh-uh, honey. Uh-uh. We can do it all right here. <laughs> Thank God for the weekly news to give us this inspiration. I know. It That's... always inspires us, doesn't it, sweetheart? I almost feel like going through some of the back issues. Oh! <laughs> yeah, Whoa. here's one of our favorites. 70-year-olds in shotgun wedding. Oh, boy, oh, boy. We got a lot of them around this neighborhood, too. <laughs> Let's see. What's Let's going on see here? here? What a cute baby. He's a sweetheart. I know. He it's didn't sleep for a whole year. Well, Can you imagine the parents? They must have been nuts. That's one thing I love is the babies. Ah. Uh, all the babies. Let's see some Every good week. baby stories. Ooh. Oh my, oh mm. my, if this isn't something. Rattler puts the bite on Hungry Hunter. Oh mm -hmm. gosh. Let's see if we can get one of those good old baby stories here. Ah, uh, Volcano, that's good. Mm -hmm. mm, I liked that story. That was one of my favorites. Yes, that was the Mountain of Fire. <laughs> I remember that. Oh, honey, don't look at her. No, all right. There's always a lot of pretty girls in this I magazine, know. too, which that's I like. That's the only thing. And that. I like a lot of the advertisements because they're always advertising things like how to get rich sooner than you think, you mm, know? Mm -hmm. They're kind of got a lot of good ideas on the way we can make some money, you know, without doing too much. Well, work. let's do it, Fred. Well, what are we waiting these, for? I, me, I've tried a lot of these things. We're just about due for about $60,000. We $60, are, $60, honey. Dollars. That's right. It's our turn. It's coming up. <laughs> There's your friend, the prince, with a frog on his head. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. I love these stories about Prince Charles. <laughs> Isn't it cute? And Di. She's a sweetheart, too. He has a frog and she has a hat on. And here's Elton John. Doesn't he look silly with that silly hair? Oh, my goodness he gracious. He wants babies, sweetheart. Well, I think everybody should have a baby uh, if they oh, want yeah, one. Oh, yeah, if they want one. Sure. Uh-huh. Oh, there's that killer granny. I don't want to read mm. about her again. Oh, you know, that looks like one of those things we saw on the other one. Honey, I think that's one of those blimps. From outer space? Uh -huh. It looks like a big bubble. It really does. Wow. It's in Central Park, though. Really? Yeah. They're moving north. They're moving north. <laughs> <laughs> I expect to see one pretty soon when we Better go Better watch out. All right, I'll, I will. Let's see now. There's the baby. Oh, a walking gosh. nightmare. Because he stayed up all night. Of course it was a nightmare. <laughs> you know what, though? He was allergic to water. And he couldn't, if he drank water, he'd stay up all night. Oh, poor little guy. Yeah, it's not fair. Should have given him a little bait. bourbon with his water. He'd have gone to sleep <laughs> That's faster. what he needed. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Isn't it? I don't gosh. like reading those don't stories read about no. wife killers. Wife killers, no. No, no, mm -mm, no, mm -mm, no. Mm -mm. Let's see. Oh, here we go. Every other copy <clears throat> free. Yep. I think we ought to order up we now. We better resubscribe, Fred, honey. That's, yeah, that, it's a great deal. Yeah. It's a great deal. It really is. That means we can get a 52 weeks for the price of 26. Oh, you figured that out fast. Uh, <laughs> well, I always was pretty good at math. You really are. Thank goodness yeah. one of us is. Oh, well, we only need one of us has to add up things. That's all right. <laughs> there they are, those 70-year-olds. Oh, good, good. I think we should get married again when we're 70. I do, too. Don't you? Wouldn't I that do be too. fun? I think it's a wonderful will idea. We? Will yep. we? Oh, do sure you? we will. Oh, sure, okay. because it kind of reinforces it. You know it what I does. mean? It yeah. does. Uh -huh. By then, it's been so long, you yeah. know, and... Uh, 
everything. Let's see here, trivia facts. Here's Those that, are kind of Fred, here's that cute little gal who's playing football. Oh, I think she's terrific. Isn't yep. she something? She's only 13 and she plays football with the boys. Uh -huh. Oh, great. She is something. She, she really is. She is something. Let's see, what else have we got here? Look at this sneaky Russian out with Scotland Yard by playing possum, making him <laughs> believe he was asleep for 21 days. Can you believe it? Well, you know how, how sneaky they are. They are. I wonder what they'll think of next. Yeah. God, they probably think, make believe they're dead for 20 days or something. <laughs> they might bury him. Oh, you're reminding me of that head, Fred. Oh, yeah. Please, well, all right. let's not discuss that. That was very upsetting. Well, I think that was one of my favorite ones, though. Was it? You'll yeah. probably want to go back and read it again, won't you? <laughs> I will read it again. Will you read it in the bathtub by yourself, sweetheart? I'll take it to work tomorrow and read it to the boys. Okay, read I it know, to the like boys. It. They'll, they'll like, like it. it. Maybe they can figure out what uh, Legally Dead is. <laughs> oh, yeah, well. Oh, 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 honey, that's just too... Oh, no. no. That's really too too terrible. That's really? Not, yeah. It looks well, good to me. Bionic boy, good. yeah. Bionic He's got a $6,000 bionic arm. Oh. It's got to be pretty good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. $6,000 and only aluminum and plastic. I think it's great that they could fit him with something like that. A bionic arm. That is something. Terrific. Mm -hmm. He's happy, yeah. so that's what counts. Yeah. There you go. Uh-oh. There she is. Yep. Here it is. Fred. One thing that's really good is it tells you about all these, all these girls who are, you know, taking on the men's job. Yeah, that's taking on, getting great. out there, you know. She's striving. a butler. I think it's mm -hmm. wonderful. Why right? not? Next Why not? thing you know, they'll be president. That's right. Yep. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. I hope yep. it happens in my lifetime. Oh, I think it will. That's honey. all I can say. And then when we get to seventy, we can have our marriage again, and we'll have. A woman president. Oh, all at the same time? All at the same time. <laughs> and we can uh, keep my head alive for six days if I happen to go before you, which will probably be the case. Most of us guys do go before them. Okay. Well, that's, that's wonderful. Congratulations for being with us. You bet your life. <laughs> Tune in again next week, same time, same station, for Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life. Don't miss the Chrysler Corporation's big TV show on another network. And don't forget Groucho's TV show, also brought to you by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America, who invite you to visit your neighborhood showroom today to see and drive the most exciting car in the world today. DeSoto for 1957. And when you go in, tell them Groucho sent you. So long, folks, and remember... It's the lovely, it's the dynamic, it's the soda. Folks, here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. Don't jump the gun when the signal changes. Give the walkers a break. You Bet Your Life, transcribed from Hollywood, is produced by John Goodell. Directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jack Meekin. This is George Cunningham.